Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's film screening of Fresia, which is award-winning film and the first UK movie to address hated and Islamophobia. This screening has been organized as a part of Islamophobia Awareness Month. Thank you for taking the time out and being here tonight. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Kansila Mujibur Rahman, Deputy Cabinet Member for Communities, and I will be your host for this evening. As you all know, Islamophobia Awareness Month is about Islam and Muslims. This month-long campaign aimed to raise awareness of Islamophobic hate crime and showcase the positive contribution of British Muslim to our society. The Islamophobia Awareness Month is rooted in racism, recognize that Islamophobia is type of racism that targets the expression of Muslimness. The New Home Council is committed to embedding equality and diversity across all of its work and understand the important role we have to play in ensure an inclusive environment for all our residents and staff. New Home Council is the first council in country to pass the Islamophobia definition. There have been various events throughout the November to promote the key messages and aims of Islamophobia Awareness Month. Tonight is the last program of the month which is addressed Islamophobia is explored through a feature film called Frisa. This film certified as a 12 rated. There may be a material that is not generally suitable for children age under 12. No one younger than 12 may see a 12 a film unless accompanied by an adult. This movie presents a multi narrative journey that waves between three families in present day, the breadfruit where three world collide and leaves Muslim scholar fighting for his life. Housekeeping, all attendees are automatically muted and video turned off when joining Zoom. This webinar is being recorded. However, the movie will not be available to watch post-event, only the Q&A session. We politely ask that attendees do not use any software to record or copy any part of this film being shown this evening. After you watch the film, there will be a very special guest who will be joining with us. He is famous actor, writer, and director of this film, Mr. Conor Ibrahim. He will be answering a few of our questions about the content of the film. So if you have any question, please put into the Q&A function. There, are a Q, there is a Q&A function in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen, which you can use through the webinar, and he will try to answer them. Bear in mind, this is a live program, so be forgive us if any technical difficulty. But now, stay with us and let's the watch the film together. What a great and relevant film we watched. Now I'd like to introduce you, you all to the main person behind the creation of this film, Mr. Conor Ibrahim. I began with a quick introduction to Mr. Ibrahim and he, his background. He began his professional life as an actor in 1999 and appeared in various productions such as DL and Pasco, Bad Girls and Standard before taking up script writing in his spare time. That along with the desire to produce his own work, ultimate 
ultimately lead to establish Arakan Creative in 2009, an Islamic theater company and social enterprise. Arakan looks to address issues within the Muslim world to dispel misconception and so seeds of positive changes, having covered issues such as mental health awareness, hijab, and extremism. Good evening, Mr. Ibrahim. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Firstly, I'd like to say you really hold the BR attention with your film. I think it is very relevant for most of people. Firstly, can you tell us what's, what is the main meaning of the um, choice behind the film title? So the title of Frisia, um, I wanted to choose something that was uh, unique and a little bit different because I could have gone with the title Islamophobia, um, but it was a little bit easy. I wanted people to think and direct people to the kind of question you've asked me. So the Frisia flower is something that florists usually recommend you give to someone who's under pressure. And I think you can agree that all three of the main people in the story who had some kind of pressure to deal with in their lives. So that represents that. And it, it's, um, it's actually the first, hopefully, of two sequels I hope to do that will all revolve around a name of a flower which means something else. So uh, that has yet to come to fruition. Uh, but that's, that's me kind of thinking ahead. So I'm hoping it will at some point become a trilogy and they'll all have names of the films after flowers with different meanings. Um, so this this is really great actually. And um, we know um, you are a film director, a writer, a producer, while in so many different areas. Can you tell us more about you and what actually inspired you to choose this film line? So Arakan began as a as a theater company, social enterprise, as you as you um, mentioned before. Um, the reason I wanted to do the film is because there was no other film maker, I guess, especially in the Western world, that was willing to pick up the camera and do that. And in fact, it remains to this day, unless someone is um, able to correct me, the only UK film that addresses the issue. Yes, there are projects that weave elements of Islamophobia or prejudice into their narrative, but it's not a central focus as this film is. Um, you know, I'm a Muslim myself, I'm an artist, and I think I would do a disservice to, to my faith and to my contribution to humanity if I did not do my best to make my corner of the world a little bit better before my maker calls me back. So basically, it's, um, it's a way to get the conversation going and help people understand that, you know, most of the people from the Muslim community are not monsters as portrayed in usual Western films or hijacked by those, you know, those kind of extreme few um, that we have something else to contribute. And most of us are Sorry, I think we lost the connection. Please stay with us. Can you yeah. Can you hear me? So you're having technical difficulties, I think. Hey. Can you? We can see you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's working now. You can't, you can't hear me? Yeah, now, now it's fine. Now, now it's oh. fine. Yeah. 
Sorry for technical process. It's all right. Sorry. So yeah, so there is another question was on the uh, Korean box. Um, was there any personal reason or personal experience behind you making this movie? Have you personally felt any racism in your own life? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, to both questions, I guess. Um, I've not had that much experience personally of racism. Um, it's a little funny, if I can put it that way. There was one time many years ago, a neighbor of a family member, an Asian uh, member of the community, uh, called me a, um, a white B word. Um, and at school one time, someone called me a black B word and he was white. And I'm thinking, well, that's because I'm mixed race. I'm from both communities. So uh, I found that a bit amusing that people just tend to pick on what they think is your weakest point and try and have a go at you. That was probably one of the few examples I can ever experience. Other stuff has been more silent, you know, the kind of the cold eye treatment, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but um, my, uh, my wife has experienced it um, many years ago. She used to wear the hijab and she was chased by a racist in a train station. Thankfully, it was caught on CCTV. He would deny it before he was caught out. Um, and ever since then, she's not worn it. And I am fully supportive of that decision. And that was scary. Um, so I guess, and you know, from stories I've heard from friends, etc. Uh, but that's, the, that's as close as I ever want to be to racism. Um, I think at some point, uh, people in, in this country who are not from the white community may at the very least know someone who's experienced it or at worst, will experience it themselves. That's an unfortunate fact. I'm not exaggerating that. Um, or they'll certainly pick up the vibes if they're not, you know, um, if they're not altogether clued up. There is always going to be something there, I think. Um, and so that, that, it's not just that. It's just my, my, my wish to, like I said before, create a better piece of the world before I leave it. And uh, the only way I knew how at that point and still is through my creative outputs. So I, you know, I couldn't just sit on my hands and not do anything. I, I felt compelled to make this film and I, I am to do more in the future. Um, were there any barrier you can came up uh, against during the, the film or do you get um, any black class or creating this film? Uh, no, I mean, there's some cynicism amongst certain people, certain audience members. Usually you can't see beyond you know, end of their nose. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll take criticism as much as the next person, but as long as it's thought through and rational, not for the sake of, oh, you know, all Muslims are the same, you're terrorists, you know, this never happens to you. I mean, come on, people grow a brain. You know, if you're gonna have a debate, uh, you exercise more than two brain cells and then do that and bring it to the table. Uh, and, I, and I've readily addressed those people as and when they've arisen, but and in frankness, there's not been that much overall. And this is based on all the feedback forms that we've, handed out in, in previous screenings at cinemas and community venues has been an average of 80 to 90% positive feedback. Uh, and most of them have been, you know, the same kind of thing. It's balanced, it's positive, it's real. Um, the minor things have been, it's not violent enough, it's too violent, the seats are uncomfortable, it's not long enough. Um, you know, trivial things, I guess. But overall, people have been welcoming of the fact that this is on film. Okay. So there is a um, thousand themes and story plots in the world, but wha what you made to choose um, this um, hate crime as a, your um, as theme as a story? Um, well, there was a funding round available from the Joseph Rountree Charitable Trust in 2012, looking to address two issues, racial inequality and Islamophobia. Uh, within the West Yorkshire region, it was aimed at people who are based there. Um, and with that latter uh, kind of title of Islamophobia, we felt well placed as Arakan to address the issue. So we put together a pitch for three years, comprising three different creative outputs. One was a theatre play, one was initially three short films, which then became the feature film, uh, and, and a comic book. So um, that's what I guess inspired me. And you know, kudos to them. As far as I know, they still remain to this day the only national charity to offer funding of that scale to address Islamophobia. And who are they? They are a Quaker Christian organization. And I, I, I put the challenge out there to anyone who heads up an, um, a Muslim or any other type of organization to put the money where the mouth is and fund this kind of, um, this kind of event, if you like, 
um, because much more is needed. It, one, one funding round is never going to be enough for this kind of issue, unfortunately. Your film was um, very re relevant and um, current. Do you have any plan on gaining uh, like a wider viewing across the Britain, perhaps on television, YouTube, or even more globally, as Islamophobia does not only exist in Great Britain, as a Muslim all around the world may experience it on some level at some point of their life. I believe your film can be considered a form of uh, medium to educate and show the other side um, that things are not always as they judge or assume. Absolutely. I mean, you can't tell now, but my knuckles are red raw from knocking on countless doors to get distribution deals, to get it on the likes of Netflix. But unfortunately, the vast majority of distributors uh, I contacted said, no, no thanks, we'll pass the polite kind of rejections. Um, and we're talking big, you know, big distributors who, who you need, those are the keys to doors that, you know, I, I as an independent could never uh, access. Um, YouTube, yeah, and Vimeo, for example, I could do as a last resort, and I am considering that. Uh, I've tried contacting Netflix, but you try getting in touch with them, it's near or impossible. Um, I've tried contacting Imran Khan of Pakistan, um, getting nowhere there. Uh, and I know he's, you know, he's a big champion of this kind of issue. Um, I, I got it as, as, as far as 10 UK cinema screens, and that was an effort in itself, but that takes a lot of money. Overall, uh, I would love for it to reach a wider audience, apart from the festivals it's been to in America, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, uh, but they're one-offs, they're drops in an ocean. Uh, so I'd welcome any opportunity for any platform to, to take this farther afield. Um, so the ball is very much in, in their court. Yeah, I think I think that'll be great. The the great things about your film the, that that um, shows both sides of the coin storyline, like struggling Muslim and non-Muslim. Am I right to say that the most important lesson that your film was to demonstrate how should we um, never judge a book its cover? You never know what troubles or other person is going through, so you shouldn't be make assumption before you get. To know someone absolutely so they, I totally agree with yeah. that i guess the, the the kind of sound bite if you if you want to leave something uh with the audience would be um put down the newspaper put down the mobile phone and whatever you might have read on twitter or social media and get to know the person you think you should be hitting because someone convinced you that that's the case get to know them a little bit you might be proven wrong have a bus stop conversation that was as was in the film yeah. So I enjoyed discussing to you your film about them. Um, unfortunately, uh, we have to finish. So before you conclude, what you would be the last um, I'd like to say to our viewers? Uh, just like to say thank you for your time and your questions. Um, and you're clearly interested in, in this, otherwise you want to start through a couple of hours of this evening. Um, it's just Something Gandhi said, you know, be the change. You know, if you want to see a brighter tomorrow for your children and your neighbor's children and their children, then just stick on the right side of the law and pay people a bit more respect. And that's the best I can say. That's the message I would always uh, espouse. And I, I hope we'll be continuing you know, you, this kind of the similar film we'll be continuing we'll be making. So, so. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ibrahim, for giving us the opportunity to watch your film and your valuable time as well. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Dear viewers, with tonight's program, we are finishing our month-long Islamophobia awareness program. On behalf of our mayor, Rukshana Fayez, I would like to thank all our guests and viewers who joined us throughout the month. A special thanks to all our officers who work hard to behind the camera to make this event come together. Islamophobia Awareness Month, Holocaust Memorial Day, those kind of days remind us to stay united and rid of hate from within ourselves. Do not judge a person by their race, religion, or their color of the skin. We have to remember that humanity should come first. We are firstly human being, and if you believe that, then we can live a peaceful and livable world for our next generation. Thank you so much once again for joining us tonight. Good night, everyone.